Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm going over four tips to reduce morning anxiety. Now, we do have other episodes about morning anxiety, and I'll have those in the show notes, but you can also make a note in your head right now. If you want more, you can look at episode 254. And I think that you can just search also on the website and see morning anxiety. Uh, but I wanted to go over four tips that you can actually use to do this. Morning anxiety is very common and can feel like it's ruining the entire day. So this is a great thing to talk about so that we can start our day without thinking the words that I used to always think when I had it, because I would feel that cortisol in the morning very strongly. And I didn't know what it was at the time, or if I knew it wouldn't make me anxious so much. And I'm telling you, I used to wake up open my eyes, here it is, a brand new day. And I would say, oh no, here we go. Because I could feel that feeling and it made me feel like the whole day was set up now to have those feelings of doom and gloom. So let's look at first, because I could have a lot of new listeners that are not quite familiar with the symptoms of morning anxiety. So let's go over those a little bit. One of them might be that you feel fatigue when you wake up, even after being in the bed for eight hours. You could have that feeling I just described of doom or of of waiting for the other shoe to drop. That's so common. Just that feeling of, oh no, here we go again. You could have sensations of panic, of, of the panic attack itself. You could have the tight chest. You could have tense muscles and a higher rate of, of heart rate, right? You could wake up with, as soon as you open your eyes, the heart rate starts going up. And you could have difficulty breathing, the, the um, feeling of the lump in the throat or the closing of the throat. Those, any of those are possible and more. But you could wake up with those feelings as soon as you wake up and then you're thinking, oh no, here we go. You could have difficulty concentrating. This is another way that it can manifest is, is not being able to really focus and, and, and know, you know, okay, what is today about? What am I going to be doing? And on the other hand, you could be feeling overwhelmed by all of the things that you need to be doing and having worry or nervousness about the entire day that's ahead of you. So. If you have any of that going on, keep listening because you're going to find some ways to deal with this. You don't need to have this be your entire day and you don't need to be afraid of it. So what is it that could cause morning anxiety? And this is good information because once you understand intellectually, it doesn't make it go away, but it gives you a stronger sense of resolve to be able to hang in there with it because you know this isn't dangerous and this isn't my body going totally off the tracks. Morning anxiety is a reaction to the excess stress and worries that we have. And there are obviously many causes that can contribute to those symptoms to that feeling of excess stress and excess worry. So you can see why we would wake up with morning anxiety because we went to bed with excess stress and worries, or we lived the prior day with excess stress and worries. So you can just look at it as this is cause and effect. There isn't something dreadfully wrong with me. This is my body reacting to excess stress and worry. 
and the stress hormone cortisol is released by our adrenal glands in response to fear and stress. So we already know this hormone cortisol is released in higher amounts by our adrenal glands in response to fear or stress. So we know we had stress the day before, and then we're going to wake up and our body is going to be waking us up with our cortisol. This is a response known as um, cortisol awakening response. And it is our cortisol waking us up because it's uh, our, our body naturally does this. There's nothing wrong with us, but we already have higher rates of cortisol because we're, we were stressed and worried the night before. So now we have this additional cortisol coming in and it's at its most high the first hour of us waking up. And so many of us myself included back in the day, confuse that cortisol awakening response with anxiety. All I was feeling laying in my bed was my own heightened cortisol from stress and worry with this cortisol awakening response, which is normal. But I interpreted the entire feeling and sensation as anxiety or panic. And I was concerned that, oh no, here we go. It's going to be one of those days. And what does that do? That simply fuels the fire for more cortisol to be released because I'm worried and I'm stressing about my symptom and sensation of something that's quite normal, the cortisol awakening response. So this cortisol being highest one hour, uh, the first hour that we are awake really can help to explain why we experience an increase in anxiety in the morning. And on the flip side, why so many people report, and I remember having this myself, feeling so much calmer and more relaxed and actually air quotes around the word normal, uh, in the evening, because that is when our cortisol levels begin to recede and they're at their lowest at night. So when starting the day, be aware of what we're doing, of what we are putting in our body, anything that can increase anxiety symptoms, and any other things in our life that could also be increasing the anxiety symptoms and sensations, such as low blood sugar from a lack of food. We just had a at least eight hours and probably closer to 12 hours of not eating. It was our little fast. You know, humans are meant to fast and we do it quite naturally. That's why breakfast is called breakfast because it's when we break our fast and we are hungry, may very well be hungry in the morning. Now, depending on your own body, your own diet, whatever, you may not be hungry and that's fine. But you may, if you are highly sensitive and boy, did I have this back in the day, my blood sugar would be very low in the morning and it was making anxiety symptoms worse. So if you go to bed worrying or you wake up in the middle of the night with anxious thoughts, you're likely to feel concerned about your day in the morning because this is uh, an unusual time for you to be spurting out cortisol. And then you have even more as your body is trying to wake you up in the morning. So you can see this is cortisol on top of cortisol on top of cortisol, and it is keeping our cycle of fear. I call it the fear, adrenaline, fear cycle, but it's adrenaline and cortisol are included in there. Uh, so it's the fear, stress hormone, fear cycle is just raging. And especially as that cortisol level in the morning is added into the mix. 
So there are a lot of lifestyle changes that we can do. We don't need to take a drug for this. We don't need to medicate ourselves in the morning so that we can be calm to get out of bed. We just slept for eight hours. We can deal with this. And especially once you have some information, you can start to use that, like I said earlier, to to shore yourself up, to be able to say, now, wait a minute, I know what this is, and it is not dangerous. So let's look at some of the lifestyle changes that can help manage the morning anxiety. Now, of course, getting enough sleep is really important, and that can be a, that can be a, a struggle as you're going through your anxiety clearing journey. But hang in there. It gets better over time. It doesn't happen like flipping the switch for the light. This takes time and it takes practice. So you will get more sleep in the future, but know that getting enough sleep is one of the things that can really help us. Also, eliminating alcohol and caffeine because both can trigger anxiety and panic. Eating a healthy diet that limits processed foods and sugars because those affect our blood sugar levels immensely. It's very important to reduce those as best you can. Reducing your stress at work and home, that goes without saying, and you are probably um crossing your eyes at me right now because you're saying I would do that if I could, but that's all for another podcast. We will get to that eventually. And so let's look at the uh, self-care strategies. We just talked in the last episode about self-care. Um, we talked about the inner self-care, the self-care that we want to give to ourselves on a daily or hourly basis. And now we're going to talk about some other strategies that we can use that are caring for ourselves to treat this morning anxiety. First one I want to talk about is physical activity. Oh my goodness, not only exercise, we know that exercise in and of itself is one of the best things that you can do for yourself overall, for your anxiety, for your health, for your mental and physical well-being, but exercising in the morning, physical activity in the morning is especially helpful if you are dealing with an excessive amount of worry or concern when you wake up. If you are feeling that feeling of too much cortisol in your body, like you're already ramped up and you just opened your eyes, physical activity such as taking a walk can lift your mood it can reduce your anxiety symptoms and sensations. It will help to burn off some of that adrenaline and cortisol that is now ramping up together because your morning cortisol made you fearful. So then you have adrenaline coming too. And the exercise can start to burn some of that off and improve your ability to handle stress throughout the day. This can actually help to relax you in the morning as you're preparing for your day. So go for a walk, do your stretches, do your Tai Chi, jog in place if you have to, do something physical, do, um, you know, push-ups or uh, the jackrabbits that I talk about that I'd like to do. Get that blood flowing so that you can burn off some of that excess cortisol and get on with your day. Over time, this will really help you, and this will become a new routine for you in in a little while. Number two is to practice some form of mindfulness and meditation. The goal of meditation is to be aware, to observe and notice our thoughts and feelings and our body's states and its senses without reacting to them or believing them to be true. What we do in meditation is to sit with those feelings, thoughts, and be the observer, to just see them come and see them go. We don't need to make a story out of them, which is our what we usually do with uh, things. But meditation practice is our time to not do that and be fully aware of where our mind is going and what it's doing, to be mindful. 
And so while it takes practice to get into a mindful state when you wake up in the morning, it can help to reduce the day's anxiety symptoms. So if you want to do a body scan in the morning, uh, we have the 10 minute one on our website. You can go there and grab that. You can also just find your own way of spending five to 10 minutes getting into a mindful state when you wake up in the morning to help you reduce these anxiety symptoms. The third one that I want to mention to you is the Buddha belly breathing. Deep breathing practice first thing in the morning can really help us to interrupt that fear, stress hormone, fear cycle. And we get to take the focus off the negative and the anxious thoughts and turn the focus and the energy toward our body and sense the body's breath going in and the body's breath going out with an emphasis again on this longer slower exhalation. And the fourth tip I have here is for you to challenge the negative thoughts that come up when you are having this cortisol reaction in the morning. And if you wake up with negative thoughts about your day or you catastrophize or awfulize, whatever word you like to put on it, flip your attention around and focus on what you can control. Because when we catastrophize or awfulize things, we're thinking about things we have no control over and how all of life is just going to run wild ahead of us and we have we are not able to do anything about it. Flip your attention out of that and bring it into what you can control. And if you keep a journal by your bed or a notebook or an app you can write down what you are grateful for. This is how you can flip your attention by giving it some place to go. Give the mind some place to go and ask it to to write in this journal or app what you are grateful for and know that you are writing these things down, not only to help you right now to focus on something different than this scary, awful future that your mind has you racing toward, but that the more we can focus on gratitude and things that we love and appreciate in life, the more our mind will want to start looking for those things and not just the negative. And the other benefit of doing this is that you can know you already did your gratitude journal. So three to five things written down is really going to help you. And the morning is a perfect time to do it if you are struggling with this morning cortisol sensation. It's also helpful to list some things that you're looking forward to if you want to get a little more into some other habits but you can just leave it at your three to five gratitudes and know that you have made a difference in how you are looking at life in general. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I hope that you will give these practices a try. It's one thing to listen to these and to really feel them, and I know you guys feel them. You send me emails all the time, and your your appreciation for uh, the podcast and for what we talk about here, but it's my hope and prayer for you that you will implement these things that we are talking about Not everything, obviously time will not allow for us to do everything, but you can pick what really resonates with you and really implement it into your own life. And now for today's quote. Your body is precious. It's your vehicle for awakening. Treat it with care. And that's from the Buddha. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.